Unlike the convection problem, the diffusion problem has a second order derivative. The 1D heat equation is an example of diffusion equation and it describes how heat evolves over time in a solid medium. In the case of the heat equation, alpha is the thermal diffusivity of the medium. For simplicity, let's use the same initial condition than in our previous exercise, a Gaussian function normalized by its value in x equals zero. For the boundary condition, we're going to assume a Dirichlet boundary condition. Let's employ the classic diffusion scheme to solve our problem numerically. The mesh size delta x is defined according to the domain length Lx and the number of discretization points Nx. One more time, the time step delta t must be chosen wisely in order to keep the scheme stable. To study the consistency and precision of the present scheme, we use again the Taylor's expansion in space. If we sum both equations, the odd number derivative terms will cancel each other out. In rearranging the equation, we obtain the following expression. Using Taylor's expansion in time, it is easy to see that the truncation error tends to zero when delta t and delta x tends to zero, evolving in order 1 in time and 2 in space. The numerical scheme is therefore consistent. To study the stability of the scheme, we have to apply the Fourier transformation to the scheme equation. And knowing this important relation that we saw in the last video, we obtain the following expression. In order to have a stable scheme, the modulus of the amplification coefficient must be less than or equal to unity. Using the following identities, the previous equation can be written as follows. Writing alpha times delta t over delta x squared equals to sigma, the condition for stability is given by the following formula. But the term sinus squared k delta x over 2 is always positive. Thus, to satisfy the previous equation, we must have sigma less than or equal to one half. This equation gives the stability requirement for the forward time central space scheme when applied to the one dimensional heat equation. Let's have a look at the code now. In this part, we import some libraries. You don't really need this parameters definition here, but I think uh, the graphics look much better. Then we define the parameters. We solve the diffusion problem here. We apply the boundary conditions and then we plot the solution. Let's see if the code is working. It is running. Great. So here I show you the initial condition and the numerical solution for sigma equals 0 0.4. In our simulations, we discretized the domain in 101 points and we tested two values of sigma, 0 0.4 and 0 0.6, to validate the stability criterion that we just derived. For both simulations, we have delta x equals 0 0.04 and alpha equals 0 0.01. The results are shown in the following figures. The stability criterion is once again verified. While we have a stable solution for sigma less than 0.5, the solution diverges for sigma greater than 0.5. For this problem of pure diffusion with the specified boundary conditions, the quantity u fades. But why a similar behavior is observed for the pure convection problem using the upwind scheme? The answer is that the following first order upwind scheme can be rearranged as shown in this equation, which now contains a central difference term and a second difference dissipation term. That's why we have a dissipation in the convection scheme. In the next exercise, let's try to improve the performance of a central scheme by choosing wisely the dissipative term. Are you ready?